Coach Ferry. I'm the head football coach here at Benedict College. Welcome to the jungle, baby. Welcome into the Coach Chettis Berry Show, all things better than college Tiger football, baby. Coach, what's up? How you doing, man? My man. Good to see you, sir. 50 grand. What's happening? Go Tigers. Oh, he's taking it back. My <laughs> man, 50 grand. That's what's up. Listen, I tell you what, uh, it's, it was a great game, but we're going to get into that and all of the things that happened that are exciting. Of course, this is season three and also uh, uh, third number show number three for mm -hmm. Coach Jenna Berry show for season three. So, mm -hmm. you know, here it is, Coach. You, you got some great sponsors that are on board to help support the Tigers. And as you guys keep gaining momentum, people want to jump on board with uh, BC Tigers, which I think is a great thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. We're very, very grateful for all our sponsors. Everybody's been very, very supportive of our program. And it's a great day to be a Tiger. That's right. South Point Roofing and Restoration, we thank you so much for being the, the primary uh, sponsor for the show. Lexington Medical Center, they are back with us. We got Goodwill as well, who's on board with us, as well as uh, Columbia Metropolitan Airport. And I got to tell you, they're doing something pretty cool for all of the home games. So we'll get into that detail coming up a little later on, which you could be flying somewhere. Compliments of uh, uh, CAE, that is Columbia Metropolitan Airport. Also, big shouts to Founders Credit Union, Prisma Health, as well as South Carolina Education Lottery. They've been Big time supporters of Better to College Athletics as well as BC football. So thank you again, our sponsors, for allowing us to bring this to you. So let's talk about it. You guys are one and zero again. One and zero. One and zero. One and zero. And a shutout. Another big shutout going down with your BC Tigers, 34-0 against uh, Edward Waters. You guys were in Jacksonville, Florida for that one. So a first road trip and a first big win, uh, win for the guys, too. So um, dominating performance by the defense. These guys do not yield anything. You guys held them to, I think, 64 yards, which is amazing for a defense. But Absolutely. I know you're going to talk about that and all the three – things that you talk about the defense does. Uh -huh. See, he does all that. Coach does that. I'm just going to set you up. You guys had a, a, an amazing uh, play with this an amazing game with Edward Water. So I'm going to let you jump right into it. And let's talk about this first drive. Well, first of all, to God be the glory again. Just any opportunity you get to go out and play the game of football and, and go 1-0, and oh, that's, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. And what an awesome performance by our, our defense. You know, they, they again, uh, it's hard to get one shutout, but let alone back-to-back -back, two shutouts, and again, that is the standard. You know, we really, really feel strong about our defense. We recruit it that way to make sure we can load up on our defense, and uh, they're doing an amazing job, and I'm very, very grateful to have them on our football team, because no doubt about it, they do a great job. But, you know, all in all, you know, whenever we can go on the, on the road and get a victory, you're talking about our first SIAC game. We had traveled down to Jacksonville, floor. Florida and came back with a victory and that's the ultimate mission when it's all said and done but that opening drive we always talk about having a fast start and uh, they kicked the ball to us so we took that opening drive down for a big time drive it was a 14 play drive you're talking about not only uh, starting fast but it's an opportunity to really really generate offense and we were able to take that drive down with a little mixture of run a little mixture of pass uh, we fed the ball to Zaire Scotland for the majority of the time to give him the ball to get him in his rhythm. And we also threw a couple quick game passes, a couple intermediate throws as well. Aeneas Dennis did a great job of engineering that first drive of the game. And 14 plays later, we're in the box with, a, uh, with uh, Zaire Scotland off tackle for our first touchdown. Now we're up 7 to nothing to start the football game. It's amazing when your offense gets the ball first and they eat up half the first quarter. Mm -hmm. Seven minutes, 43 seconds, you guys held that on that drive. You talked about how long you had it and brought it down, which is, uh, uh, I mean, amazing, put it that way. Mm -hmm. Taking up this game, you guys have to now kick off to them, get it, you guys force them to punt, and your defense steps in once again. Defense, play ball, they started fast. We always talk about a fast start, and they were able to force them to punt the ball, and we put a little pressure on the punter, and uh, he was able to shank it, uh, Day Day Peterson got a little bit of piece of it, and uh, he shanked it, and uh, we had an opportunity to get the ball in great field position. So in our mind, we can really, really, really have a fast start, especially if we can generate points. So we were able to take the ball down. I think we found Caden High on a big play on that drive as well, and then we ended up running one of our reverses all right, to Torrey Morrison. So he got us in scoring range, but unfortunately that drive stalled a little bit. We didn't get it in the box 
per se in terms of a touchdown, but we did end that drive uh, with a 22-yard field goal by Tom Piccarillo. Now we're up 10-0. to now, you guys are going to think I'm going to sound like a broken record, but the defense does it again. They're forcing uh, Edward Waters to punt. This is amazing with your defense. I mean, they're playing lights out in this mm -hmm. game. Absolutely. They're, they're, they're playing really good ball. So we always tell them to create big plays by doing your job. We don't ask them to do anything different. The, the front has to do their job. The linebackers have to do their job. And the secondary has to do their job. But they force the uh, Edward Waters to punt again. So we get an opportunity on offense to be able to take it down. So we mixed, mixed up a little run, a little pass. Uh, Nia's Dennis did a good job of being efficient. We started off with a little pass to Reggie Harden for about nine yards. Then we were able to hit a couple other guys. Jordan Black got a uh, catch on that drive as well. So we were moving the ball pretty good, and then we end up being down inside the 10-yard line. And whenever we get that close, when we call that the tight red zone, we want to come away with touchdowns. So it was first and goal from the nine-yard line, and we took the ball down, and we ended up getting it in inside the three-yard line, and we were not able in four attempts to put it in the box. So that's very, very disappointing to know that we got that close and wasn't able to put it in the end zone. So unfortunately, we came away with that drive with zero points. So coach, powerhouse offense, you guys are putting points up left and right. What do you think the problem was not being able to get into the end zone? Well, we just didn't finish the drive. I mean, we were moving the ball, but when you get down there, it, it comes down to the big boys up front when you get that close, you know? And uh, we had some uh, miscommunication on a couple of those plays. and. You know, guys weren't in the proper gap, and then we end up coming away with zero points. So guys just got to be disciplined. I told you know everybody this whole offseason, it's not going to come down to talent. We got a lot of talent, but everybody has talent. It's going to come down to leadership and discipline, and discipline is being in your correct gap. Doing your job. Doing your 111, exactly. All right, so now we're deep into the second quarter, about two minutes left. Uh, Benedict gets the opportunity to get the ball back once again. Well, we, we were in our kind of our two-minute mode. We didn't have to rush anything because we knew we had three timeouts. So like I tell the guys, we just play our offense and take the ball down the field. And we did exactly that. So we were able to get a big play off our right side. We threw a screen to Jabari Tucker. He took it down into the fringe red zone. So we're moving. Then we come right back and hit uh, Jordan Black on a nice little uh, pass as well. So we're moving the ball down in, in, in at least – Scoring range, you know, we want touchdowns, but if we come away with field goals, that's how we have to live. But at, at the end of the day, we want to come out of there with points. So we were taking the ball down. We ended up getting it down, and I think it was 10 seconds left to go in the half, and we were able to finish that drive uh, with another 22-yard field goal by Tom Piccarillo. So now we're up at the half, 13-0. to zero. There it is, and that's the way it pretty much goes in to the locker room with you guys, 13 zip. What are your thoughts, how are the players feeling, especially because, like I said, powerhouse offense, you guys are used to getting it into that end zone, but what did y'all do or uh, talk about? Well, we made some adjustments. First thing, like I always say, we want to finish, you know, we always want to have to talk about that middle eight, the last four of the first half and then the first four of the second half. So we can't do anything about what happened in the past, all right? All we have to do as a coaching staff to understand the situation that we're in. And the situation we were in at the moment was we had a lot of what we call sins. Those are self-inflicted negatives, all right? Kudos to Edward Waters. They came out and played ball. They're going to compete. But a lot of the problems that we had had nothing to do with the opponent. It was us versus us. And once we got in the locker room and fixed us versus us, a lot of things we weren't taking that they were giving us, but it's a us versus us deal. And once we win that, it's never about the opponent. We're going to respect all our opponents, but we got to make sure that we take care of us. And I said that same thing to our coaches as well as to our players. You know, let's remove the first half, 0-0. Zero, zero. Always is our mindset in the half, whether we're up or down. Our defense has been playing lights out like they've been doing all year. They're putting us in the position to be successful offensively. Special teams is playing great ball. They're winning the field position battle, but we have to win us. It's us versus us. And once our communication got right and everybody was on the same page at the half, then you started to see the fruits of our labor. All right, we're going to take a quick, short break and get back to that second half. But first, we want to give you the player spotlight. And this, we're going to bring you Zaire Scotland. This guy, this year, matter of fact, since he's been here, has had a phenomenal season with Benedict College. So we're going to learn a little bit more about him right now. Here it is. Brought to you by Goodwill. My name is Zaire Scotland, a.k.a. Zone 6 or Lightning on the field. Uh, I'm a junior here at Benedict, class of 2025. I'm a grandma's baby, and I love the game of football. Uh, when I'm not on the football field, you can still find me somewhere outside doing something adventurous, whether that's 
playing around the water, mud and all that stuff. I love the lake. I love being around friends and stuff. So anything adventurous. I also love the to golf too. It's a fun fact people don't know about me. A little Tiger Woods in me somewhere. Uh, I'm so passionate about the game of football just because of everything that it's given to me throughout my whole life. It's been some rough times I had to deal with, and football was the one thing I always that was always there to fall back on. Uh, it's been consistent at all times. Whenever I need it, I know I can always go to football, whether that's playing it, watching it, or even playing it on a video game. Football's just always been there, and that's why I've been so passionate about it. Go Tigers! Your trip begins now. Your trip is your story, and all the best stories begin right here at the Columbia Metropolitan Airport. Whether you travel for business or pleasure, we designed CAE to maximize your comfort. Maybe your trip is one of discovery, reunion, or time to close the deal. Wherever your trip ends, it all begins right here, the Columbia Metropolitan Airport. Fly with ease. You know, one of the plays that we spotlight was uh, Zaya Scotland. Mm -hmm. This guy had 104 yards, 20 carries. I mean, he's just a powerhouse when you talk about giving this guy the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'll tell you what, he's great. I'm glad he's on our team. Mm -hmm. He's a mixture of power, size, mm -hmm. speed, elusiveness, and he really loves the game. And he's a student of the game. So not only can he run the ball well, mm -hmm. he catches the ball very well, and he also protects very well. So he understands all those phases. And guess what the beauty is? He's just a sophomore. So we got him for a long time. <laughs> We're super excited about Zaire. And speaking about Zaire, he's critical in his next possession. Well, well, exactly. We're going to feed it to him. I mean, he's a really good back. So, you know, we end up getting into a fourth and one situation. And, you know, I still had confidence in the offensive line and in Zaire Scotland. We fed him the ball. So not only did he get uh, the fourth and one, he ended up hitting him for seven yards on that carry. So we were moving the ball down the field. And we ended up getting it really, really close. All right, we were moving the ball with a mixture of run and pass. Just, you know, trying to have balance before, you know, as, when it's all said and done, we want to make sure we have balance. But we were able to get it down inside the five-yard line, and then we fed it to Zaire Scotland. So he's in there for another touchdown. Now we're up 20-0. to zero. Edward Waters, they get the ball back. But again, your defense, they show up, and they show out by stopping them. So not, not much happens there, but you guys take over. Well, we get the ball, and um, we're moving it. And then all of a sudden, we had a turnover. We always Ooh. talk about the importance of taking care of the ball. We call the ball the baby. Well, the ball is the baby. We're not going to drop the baby, so we can't drop the ball. So, <laughs> unfortunately, on that play, we had a, another blown assignment uh, on that play, and then we end up getting it on a screen pass to Zaire, and unfortunately, they put their helmet right on the ball, and we turned it over. Now our defense has to play ball in a really tough situation because they're backed up now, all right, with their backs against the wall. But just like our defense does all year, uh, they do a good job of holding them out. How they did that is by winning first down. Uh, they were able to put those guys behind the sticks, uh, JB, Jaden Broughton, and, and uh, KP. We got a lot of, a lot of initials, all right. Uh, Jerron Kilpatrick made a couple big plays, put those guys behind the sticks, and forced them again to be in a situation where they had to punt with zero points, and then we were able to receive the ball from our minus five. Now we have to go 95 yards for a score. All right, despite the score being 20 to zero, mm -hmm. I mean, Edward Waters is still fighting hard against the Benedict College Tigers. Now, score's 20 zip, you guys are pinned inside the five yard line. Mm -hmm. What you gonna do, coach? Well, we have to wake up and we gotta answer the call. We're in a backed up situation. That's what we mm -hmm. call it at that point. Our back's against the wall, so everybody's gotta be locked in to the task at hand. And when we're backed up, can't be any mistakes. So we were able to take that drive. And I told the guys before they went on the field, guys, we're getting ready to take this drive 95 yards. But you got to believe it. It starts winning between the ears first. And uh, they came out of there ready to go. On the very first play, as in a backed up situation, Aeneas Dennis was able to find Billy Pierre on a big 77-yard gain. Nice pass. We were backed up. We were confident in our guys. Everybody did their job did their 111 and we executed it and took it for a really, really big play to really change the field position. During that drive, we took it down a little bit, then all of a sudden, 
we put the ball in Jalen Taylor's hand, another one of our explosive running backs. So he was able to go off tackle for a big time run. He really went untouched because I thought the offensive line blocked it well. So it's a great day to be a Tiger. We're up now 27 to zero. Edward Waters getting a little desperate here. Fourth and six, <laughs> your defense is playing lights out, but they decided to go for it. Mm -hmm. And they decided to go for it and you know, our defense stood strong again. And uh, Giovanni Melador, what a great player, man. He's a really, really good corner for us. One of the guys on our leadership council, and uh, he was right there. He did his job, was in his area he was supposed to be in. They tried to take a shot on us, and uh, Giovanni Melador right there for a pick. So the defense was able to get the ball right back to our offense. Defense holds him again. You guys get the ball back with just over seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. And, we, and you know, at this point, you know, when you get to that point, you got to put the game away. And uh, we went back to our workhorse again, Zaire Scotland. I mean, he. He broke off some chunk runs at that point, chunk run, chunk run, and we were able to take the ball all the way down the field. And when we took the ball down the field, we were able to hit Torrey Scoot Morrison for a nice little bubble play on the left side, and he was able to take it in for a big-time touchdown. Now we're up 34-0. to zero. And that's the way it ends, 34 to zip. BC comes out with another win there, 1-0 again for the, was it the third time? It's 1-0, man. Like <laughs> that's all he's going to say. That's all he's going to say. A couple of quick notes on this game as well, real quick. Uh, stats to point out. Great job for the defense, and I know we're going to talk about the defense and what they've done. Edward Waters, get this, just uh, six first downs in the game, 14 yards rushing on 28 attempts, 55 yards uh, passing, that's it. Went one of 12 on third down conversions. I mean, you know, it, that's, that's kudos to your defense and how they played lights out. I'll tell you what, I'll start with my defensive staff. You know, when you bring all the guys back and have continuity, they worked well together. And they do a good job of leading those guys. And I always talking about they have to lead from the front. So kudos to Coach O'Daffer, Coach King, Coach Styles, and my D-line coach, Coach Howard. Man, it all starts with the big boys up front. But they're doing a great job, uh, really spearheading all the things that's happening with our defense. And then to our players, you know, they're they're – we knew going in that we were going to have a strong defense. You know, you're talking about most of our guys were returning from last season, and we were really good last year as well on defense. And I told them in the offseason, hey, guys, we were good last year, but that year is over. We got a chance to be elite in 2023, and they're playing some elite defense right now, and they're doing it by just doing their jobs. Nobody's doing anything out of the ordinary. We're doing a good job of winning first down, putting teams in a position where they have to go for them third and long, and then our D-line, they just go and hunt then. So, you know, that's the pieces of the puzzle that they're putting together. But I'm glad to see on all three levels, whether it's the front, the linebacker core on the second level, or the guys in the back end, they're just buying into their role and being the best at their role. All right, that's how it is. Great game for you, Coach. No doubt about that. Your defense and offense still doing what they do. Now, what we're going to do is take a quick break, but we're going to come back with the Lexington Medical Center Coach Spotlight. It's going to be on Jonathan Williams. He is the offensive coordinator as well as the QB coach. We'll learn more about him in just a moment and also about our next week's opponent, which is Lane. Back right after this. At Lexington Medical Center, we want you to lead a long and healthy life, and we're here to help you do just that. Our experienced team of healthcare professionals wants nothing more than to help make you well again. Take good care of yourself. And remember, we're here for you whenever you need us. If you don't already have a doctor or you're looking for a new one, choose from more than 70 physician practices at Lexington Medical Center. We wish you a lifetime of good health and happiness. Be well. Jonathan Williams, Officer Coordinator here at Benedict College from Tampa, Florida. I attended Grambling State University, where I also played for five years under both Coach Doug Williams and Broderick Fobbs. Upon leaving school, then I got into my career as an engineer. Um, three years into engineering, I decided to go back to school, where I got an opportunity to be a graduate assistant at Prairie View A&M for my former office of coordinator, who is now the head coach there. And that's where my journey began as far as coaching in college. I was under Ted White. Uh, he's now coaching in the NFL. And I had some great mentors along the way as my, both of my head coaches, Doug Williams and Broderick Fobbs, Ted White, uh, my office of coordinator, Eric Dooley, uh, and Shaq Harris. All of those guys influenced me a lot as far as coaching. After six months of GAing, I got my own room. 
and it, the journey kind of started up there. Have a few players as quarterbacks that's playing professionally now. Jawan Pass and Jalen Morton. They both play in the USFL, XFL, and they've had an extensive career uh, bouncing around from Canada back to the United States now with all the different leagues going on. They had a, a short stint in the NFL as well, both with the Packers and the Texans. So that, it, it was good to see them do that. Leaving Prairie View, that's when I went to Southern. I was only there for a year. Ended up going to the championship. And then I got the opportunity to coach in a Legacy Bowl where I met Coach Barry, and that led me to here now. Some of my favorite memories is in my short year, uh, short stint coaching, have, have to be probably seeing the guys uh, fulfill their dreams of getting to the next level or accomplishing their goals in college. Because so many kids come through and don't accomplish their goals, being able to help them uh, push through and just figure it out along the way. That's probably some of my greatest memories, seeing the kids graduate and just accomplish their goals and get to the next level. And I hope they have many more. Go Tigers. Life moves fast, and while you're raising future MVPs, it's good to know you've got a teammate with Founders, a partner you can trust to always have your back, with products and services that give you the freedom to focus on the more important things. While you're sharing those moments, remember, we're here for one single reason, to help grow your financial success. So when the game is done, you can relax, because at Founders, our most valuable player is you. The lottery is not about getting rich. The lottery is about helping people, and it always has been. It was the lottery that helped raise the Great Wall of China, maintain the roads of ancient Rome, and in this country, help fund a revolution against tyranny. And today, in South Carolina, the revolution continues. But we're not building walls or roads or bridges. We're investing in you. Want to learn more? Visit sceducationlottery.com slash better you. Welcome back to the Coach Jennis Berry Show. All things better than college football, baby, as they get into it with a big old game against uh, uh, Edward Waters, 34 to zip. So now we're going to look forward to our next game. But before we do that, we couldn't bring you the show if it had not been for our great sponsors like South Point Roofing and Restoration. Thank you so much. Matter of fact, you know, I talked about these fans a moment ago that uh, did show out for you. Man, listen. Oh, man. I, I thought we were at a home game. I was so grateful for the BC Tigers that represented showed up. I mean, what a great crowd that we bought with us. And that's important. You know, we had the BCBOD, our band, rocking the house right behind our bench. When we looked up, all we saw was a sea of purple and gold. You guys just don't know how awesome that is to get the support from our fan base, families, loved ones to come and support and show all these BC Tigers for all the work that they do, that you appreciate them and we appreciate you. So again, it's awesome when you guys come out and really, really support us. So anytime you can come, whether it's home or away, come check out the Tigers because we got something special that we're showing to all the BC fans all across the nation. All right, there it is. Now we're going to travel to Lane, which is in Jackson, Tennessee, a bit further out. But if you have some time on your hand, you might want to take a road trip and have some fun because along the way, you're going to get the sights and sounds. Then you get to the stadium and you're going to get your Benedict College Tigers. All right. So let's see if you can make that trip to Lane. They are 0-2. But, you know, when you got an 0-2 team, you can't look past them because of the fact that that's a dangerous team. That means they got to prove something and they want to prove something to you guys. So that's mm -hmm. what's going to that's the way it's going to look. Well, you're looking at Lane College. First of all, Coach Brown does an amazing job with those guys on all three phases, offense, defense, special teams. All their, their record may be 0-2. That's a really, really good football team. I mean, they have players on all three phases, and they do a good job of what they do offensively, defensively, and special teams, and they'll be ready. I mean, they took two tough losses, one to Miles College, and they lost another one to a SWAC opponent, uh, Alabama a and So they'll be chopping at the bit. They understand this is a conference game. We're coming to their house. But again, it's never about the opponent. It's about us being locked in. We respect all opponents, but our team has to be locked in when we take that road trip to Jackson, Tennessee. And we have one mission and one mission in mind, and that's to come back to 
Columbia, South Carolina, 1-0. Uh, you know, it's going to be – your defense is good, mm -hmm. but they're going to have a time against a quarterback, Polo Solomon, who threw 361 mm -hmm. yards. So he's got an arm. Oh, yeah, he can really – he can play. He's mm -hmm. a dual threat quarterback. He does a great job. And like I say, Coach Brown does a good job with that offense. And he has some really explosive receivers, too. And we know about them really, really well. He got some guys, and he's going to do a good job of trying to establish the running game as well. So our defense will have their hands full. They'll, they understand what's at stake, and they know what we have to do. And again, they don't have to worry about the end goal. Just win every rep, every play, every down, every drive, every series. In the game of football, good things are going to happen. Keep playing. But bad things are going to happen, too. Keep playing. At the end of the day, play the next play, and I like our chances when we go uh, play Lane College in, in Jackson, Tennessee. Also, Coach, uh, when you talk about the Lane Dragons, they have the fewest penalties. They're disciplined. They're disciplined. Fewest penalties in the SIAC. That's important, you know, disciplined football team. And like I say, we got our work cut out for us when we go to Jackson, mm -hmm. Tennessee. Good football team. And, again, they're, they're not shooting themselves in the foot with penalties, so we have to do the same thing and make sure – that we win each down, and we got to make sure we locked in on discipline and leadership, and that's very, very important to us. But our mindset will be on the business trip. You know, right when we go on the road, it's never about all that other hoopla. All right, it's about the business trip, having our mindset. When we once we get to the hotel, our guys are locked in on the task at hand, and that's to come back to Columbia, South Carolina, one and all. All right. Again, we want to say thank you to our uh, sponsors of the Tennis Berry Show. We've got South Point Roofing and Restoration, Lexington Medical Center. We appreciate you. Goodwill, Columbia Metropolitan Airport. Don't forget at the home games, you get to register. You're going to get a great uh, Columbia Metropolitan Airport gift bag. And you could even qualify for a trip to fly somewhere in, within the continental U.S. So make sure you're at those home games for that. Then we got Founders Credit Union. Thank you so much. Prisma Health and also the South Carolina Education Lottery, who's been a Proud sponsor of Benedict Athletics and Benedict Football for quite some time. But when you play, play responsibly. We thank you so much. We thank you too, Coach, Appreciate doing you, what you do. Appreciate the Tigers, that. knocking them out. God bless you, man. Thank Where's you. your growl? <laughs> or is that my turn? <laughs> growl. I can't do it quite like that guy. That's all good. But it's you know good. what happens? On that field, we growl. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a great day to be a Tiger. Let's get it. Go Tigers.